Okay, so this answer is really going to concentrate on how our documentary, TV documentary extracts, uses challenges and extends the codes and conventions of existing documentaries. So here goes. And don't forget the newspaper and radio adverts. The documentary that I'm really excited about at the moment is American Justice, and when you look at the beginning of that, it's it's a title sequence, and it's very cinematic with extracts from the, the piece. They don't have a pre-title role and then a title sequence. So we'd go on either the 328, the 6 or the 36, primarily the 328. Like during the day, it's all about like measurements, timing, positioning. Literally I'd be looking at marks on the ground. My passion started off when I was little, like when I was three or two. And it had two new buses added to its PVR, the Enver 200 MMCs. It goes from Patmore State to Elephant and Castle. I took it from Elephant and Castle to Patmore State, and I was just completely bored. You know, it, it goes through side routes, like with single deckers, it goes through side routes. I can't forget Crickord Bus Garage, working, um, working at Crickord Bus Garage, the work experience. I mean, they were so blessed from the even when I went to go and, you know, um, ask them if work experience is available and the guy immediately embraced my enthusiasm, he acknowledged it and he's like, yeah, I mean, because I said that my, my dream is to start off as a bus driver, it's to be a bus driver, that's been my dream, like, from a child and I've stuck to it. You know, you see how the Americans, you know, in films, you might, they might portray us as either Cockney speaking or posh. You've got so much more kind of, you know, diversity and, you know, acts, different accents and characters than just the posh or the Cockney. There's no type of division like that. You've got, you know... Here they come, up the road, <laughs> after 18 years. What are you doing? So you might think it's conventional to tell a documentary story through questions and answers. But there are several ways of structuring documentary narratives. Here are four different ways. And how do you take pictures? What does it take to take a good picture or, in your words, a quality picture? Many things. I mean, like people just think, oh, you chase after buses or... I pulled the two psychologists, yeah. <laughs> to the side, yeah, and I just said to him, like, oh, you know, I've had enough of this and everything, yeah? And I pulled a, 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 a joke knife out of my pocket, and I went like this, yeah? And I told one of them what I was going to do, yeah, and she was laughing, yeah? And then the one that never knew anything, yeah, she jumped, yeah. And if they don't want to give you anything, 
you're going to have to find a way to get it. My friend Tyler is a singer. He was with Nikki Shamansky, and Tyler said, my friend Amy sings jazz, and she's great. And Nikki said to me, do you want some studio time? And I said, for what? He was like, well, if you write songs and make a record, get a record deal. So like, with our documentary about out. Isaiah, you know, we, we really organised it around asking questions and then just did some cutaways, which is a perfectly acceptable way of telling the story. Yeah, absolutely. I think if, especially if you can take the uh, the persona of the audience and you can um, you can extrapolate the kind of things the audience would want to know and ask the questions on behalf of that audience. And I think as long as you don't take on a personality that that, 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 that jars uh, with with something that you're you're doing. You're very interesting point because the other example is Louis Theroux. Yeah, but Louis Theroux, of course, is but the, but I think the subject matters that he takes on. Uh, he probably is the audience. He's asking the things the audience would probably like to ask. But I'm always interested in his reactions. That's part of the entertainment. Absolutely, of it. and that and that's because you know he he has become part of the subject himself. In American Justice, there's a, a voiceover, but they never speak to any of the characters who are the topic of the documentary. So, it's there's some talking heads, but there's never any direct questions, which is another style. Is right. that is that appealing to you? I think it is. Um, because then we're, you know, it, it's not uh, imposing the personality of the documentary maker uh, on screen visually. I mean, the, the personality of the documentary maker is always present in the documentaries he or she creates um, anyway. But so therefore, or uh, it, it is some, potentially a bit too much to have somebody uh, in, in on screen present and, and, and in the face of the viewer at all times. Finally, I, I, I thought the most perhaps radical approach was the one in Amy where everything's cut from archive and there's no controlling voice. Is that a risky thing to do? I think it's. It, it, you have to assume that the viewer... Well, I, I, no, I, I think that's fair. I think viewers are perfectly capable of building their own narratives. Um, I think with a documentary like Amy, we know the viewer... It is unlikely that the viewer is, is going to go into that documentary not knowing who Amy Winehouse is and not knowing that she died of a drug overdose. So it's a special story. So it's a special story in which we know the outcome. And I think that this gives the audience, the viewer, uh, some clues uh, as to where we, we, as to how we got to the the finality of the story, which is Amy's death. And and I, I think in some documentaries where people aren't, I don't know necessarily what happened. I think I guess we'd call it exposition. Yeah. Exposition. Uh, that is, that's to say, the 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 setup of the story becomes a little bit more important. So Amy is in some ways a special case, but it's a documentary that the filmmaker used in another uh, documentary about a racing driver, um, and I haven't seen that is one. That Senna. I, Senna, and I'd be curious to see yeah. how much exposition was used in Senna in relation to Amy. Might look better. Yeah, be interesting to see if it, if if perhaps in the style of American Justice does in its opening uh, few few seconds. Yeah. There's a, a couple of par- a couple of lines of text, which essentially set this up. And I know it's used in Making a Murder as well. There's no voiceover in that, but they use text uh, throughout to 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 uh, to, to, to uh, establish the uh, the exposition of, of of what is happening, establish the start of the narrative. It feels like we're in a golden age of documentary. It really does. I think we are, and I think a lot of that's come from um, the popularity of. Well, well, first of all, this is just my opinion, but. I think it's the uh, um, the the explosion of potential news sources uh, and of information in the information age that we're in, and I think we are looking for a, a sensible narrative because there's so much out of there and depth. Yeah. When we're interested in a subject, we want to exactly. We're, we're no longer keen. Okay, they've just printed this, and I guess that's all I'll know about this topic because that's everything that's in my Evening Standard or my Metro or, yeah. or, or, or my uh, my more uh, established news source if I'm if I'm into that tradition. Whereas, or, or that's all that's on the BBC website. Whereas now we you know we are um, we are, we have the internet and we're used to researching our own things and trying to come to our. If not our own conclusions, at least finding our our own, doing our own research. So uh, I think that's part of it. I also think that um, the podcast serial, the popularity of the podcast serial, which nobody I think could foresee, um, which was a, a real, a, you know, a true crime documentary coupled with fantastic storytelling on the part of the, the Sarah Koenig, who's the, the uh, producer and presenter of the the podcast, the world's the world's most popular. If this is the world's most popular podcast, and I think if that hadn't happened, I think if that hadn't been so popular for so long. I don't know if making a murderer would have happened. It's also Michael know. Moore, of course, who was who drew attention to it earlier still. Yeah, and he was I, he created, I suppose, the first popular documentary feature film of of, of this generation. 
and by that is to say the, the noughties. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Michael Moore is very political. Um, and, well, I don't know. I mean, the, you know, we've got, we've, we've got things like... Um, in Australia, they had something called the Chasers War on Everything, uh, which was a sort of popular late night um, kind of anarchic sketch show, but it was it was politically it was targeted political uh, political figures, and and then that's that's uh, we have something called the Last Leg, and that's actually from the makers of uh, and the presenters of the Chasers War on Everything. So uh, yes, I think there are um, uh, we we are. I mean, Michael Moore's a funny case because he's he's not so much a documentary maker as a political statement okay. maker. Right. So I don't know. I, I'm not sure I would count Michael Moore as a as a uh, as a legitimate uh, documentary maker because of his particular political position. Thank you. Just my thought. Anyway, thanks for that. Run on for a long time. You can run on for a long time. Go tell that long tongue liar. Go I'm not gonna lay down. Goodness gracious, let me tell you the news. My head's been down. We have to enforce the laws of the state of Florida. And our laws say we have to be tough. I don't care what caused you to do it. You can't run around stabbing people. Some people do belong behind bars, and I will not apologize for putting them there. Great God Almighty, here's what he said. Go tell that long tongue liar. Go and tell that. Throw your rock and hide your hand. Work in the dark against your fellow man. But sure as God made the blood. After I got off the phone, I seen the one guy on the floor. He was in the doorway of the, um, the second bedroom, and he didn't have any mask on anymore. Was he standing or? Sitting? Laying down like, on his back. Was he still alive? He was gasping for air. I have no further questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I too want to thank you for your time and attention. Your duty is to determine if the defendant has been proven guilty or not in accord with the law. It's my job to, do, to determine a proper sentence if the defendant is ultimately found guilty. You do your very best. You fight with tooth and nail every step of the way, and then you just let it unfold. If you've got somebody that you really believe is innocent, it's very scary. We charge felony murder because somebody has to be held accountable when someone dies a violent death. Our ultimate goal is to do justice.
Uh, I'm Azaya. Uh, I go by the Elias London Bus Bureau. I have a passion for London's buses, hence the name. And uh, yeah, I take photographs of London buses and then post them on Flickr or well, and or blog about them, review about new service changes, new buses, etc. My passion started off when I was little, like when I was three or two. After nursery, my grandma used to take me on bus rides because my mum was still at work. So we'd go on either the 328, the 6 or the 36, primarily the 328. Those were the ones I loved the best. Um, it was single decker back then. It started off as a single decker. Started off in 1998 to help with the um, the busyness, the, the how packed the 28s and 31s were getting. So the 328 was the extra service to accommodate those services around the Kilburn hotspots and Chelsea hotspots. So um, yeah, the Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals, I absolutely loved those buses. They were so fast, you know, you could get a real thrill from the drive. I just loved the Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals and that's where my passion stems from, those bus rides on the 328 with my grandma, which later on developed to bus rides with my mum, like going on. Like every Monday, I remember used to go to Brent Cross on the 189 to Toys R Us. That would be, yeah, that's 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 the original the passion. We try out new routes that were near us, but we didn't go on before, like exploring new routes, new local routes. And how do you take pictures? What does it take to take a good picture, or in your words, a quality picture? Many things. I mean, like people just think, oh, you chase after buses or you know uh, anyone could take a photo of a bus but for the day like during the day it's all about like measurements timing positioning literally i'll be looking at marks on the ground trying to f figure out which position is the best to get sunlight as well you need to think about where the sun is uh and but then at night that all kind of switches so the measurements the timing the position and timing become the primary factor of getting a perfect night photo and you need to think about lighting as well. Especially if it's a moving photo, you need to be really focused. Sometimes you can't even breathe. <laughs> you, know, you need to hold your breath during those moments at night shots, but that's what it takes. Obviously you need natural factors as well to perfect that, such as determination and passion, and that's how you take good bus photos. So tell me your worst bus route. P5. I've only been on it once. I don't, I try to make my you know, analysis of bus routes and buses as objective as possible but the P5 was a real bore I'm telling you um, I was <laughs> it was on a day it was on a day I, it was I'd done quite a lot previously and it had two new buses added to its PVR the, the MVR 200 MMCs it goes from Patmore State to Elephant and Castle I took it from Elephant and Castle to Patmore State and I was just completely bored you know it, it goes through side routes like with single deckers it goes through side routes that double deckers can't serve side rows that double deckers can't serve but i was just left bored like normally that's an exciting prospect because you're going through parts of london that you won't normally experience or that multiple routes don't serve but i was just completely bored the buses were boring the route was okay i mean the brixton part like electric avenue and all of that that was decent but other than that it was just trees houses and really boring batch of MMCs to be honest so for that reason the P5 is my least favourite route. Tell me about your best bus route. The 187, yeah my, the 187 is my favourite bus route. Um, as I explained earlier about the 328 being my childhood route with its Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals. When I, I rediscovered them with the 187 because my mum was like Oh, the 187, have you have you not, like she told me about the 187 and I was thinking, and I don't know that route, apparently she used to take me on that route when I was little to Asda. Anyway, we went to explore the 187 and it, I was reunited with my Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals a few years after it had been withdrawn with the 328 and that was a madness being reunited with it. I can't forget Crickhold Bus Garage, working, um, working at Crickhold Bus Garage, the work experience, I mean, they were so blessed from the... Even when I went to go and, you know, um, ask them if work experience is available and the guy immediately embraced my enthusiasm, he acknowledged it and he's like, yeah, I mean, because I said that my, my dream is to start off as a bus driver, it's to be a bus driver, that's been my dream, like from a child and I've stuck to it. What would you really miss about our city, London? Um, the buses, the characters, so just a variety of characters that you can that you can get in London I mean it's not it's not just you know you know you see how the Americans you know in films you might they might portray us as either 
Cockney speaking or posh. You've got so much more kind of, you know, diversity and, you know, acts, different accents and characters than just the posh or the Cockney. There's no type of division like that. You've got, you know, you know, you know, people from, I don't know, council estates that, you know, just down to earth chilled. You've got people, you know, from all over the world. You might have different accents, a mixture between English and them, their, their country origin accents. So, you know, just the variety and the diversity of the people.
Uh, I'm Isaiah. Uh, I go by the Elias London Bus Bureau. I have a passion for London's buses, hence the name. And uh, yeah, I take photographs of London buses and then post them on Flickr or well, and or blog about them, review about new service changes, new buses, etc. My passion started off when I was little, like when I was three or two. After nursery, my grandma used to take me on bus rides because my mum was still at work. So we'd go on either the 328, the 6 or the 36, primarily the 328. Those were the ones I loved the best. Um, it was single decker back then. It started off as a single decker. Started off in 1998 to help with the um, the busyness, the, the how packed the 28s and 31s were getting. So the 328 was the extra service to accommodate those services around the Kilburn hotspots and Chelsea hotspots. So um, yeah, the Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals, I absolutely loved those buses. They were so fast, you know, you could get a real thrill from the drive. I just love the Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals and that's where my passion stems from, those bus rides on the 328 with my grandma, which later on developed to bus rides with my mum, like going on like every Monday, I remember used to go to Brent Cross on the 189 to Toys R Us. That would be, yeah, that's 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 the origin of the passion. We try out new routes that were near us, but we didn't go on before, like exploring new routes, new local routes. And how do you take pictures? What does it take to take a good picture or, in your words, a quality picture? M many things. I mean, like people just think, oh, you chase after buses or you know, uh, anyone could take a photo of a bus, but for the day, like during the day, it's all about like measurements, timing, positioning. Literally, I'll be looking at marks on the ground, trying to f figure out which position is the best to get sunlight as well. You need to think about where the sun is. Uh, and, but then at night, that all kind of switches. So the measurements, the timing, the position, and timing become the primary factor of getting a perfect night photo, and you need think about lighting as well especially if it's a moving photo you need to be really focused sometimes you can't even breathe <laughs> you know you need to hold your breath during those moments at night shots but that's what it takes obviously you need natural factors as well to perfect that such as determination and passion and that's how you take good bus photos so tell me your worst bus route p5 i've only been on it once i don't i try to make my you know analysis of bus routes and buses as objective as possible but the P5 was a real bore I'm telling you um, I was <laughs> it was on a day it was on a day I, it was I'd done quite a lot previously and it had two new buses added to its PVR the Envera 200 MMC's it goes from Patmore Estate to Elephant and Castle I took it from Elephant and Castle to Patmore Estate and I was just completely bored you know it, it goes through side routes like with single deckers it goes through side routes that double deckers can't serve side rows that double deckers can't serve but i was just left bored like normally that's an exciting prospect because you're going through parts of london that you won't normally experience or that multiple routes don't serve but i was just completely bored the buses were boring the route was okay i mean the brixton part like electric avenue and all of that that was decent but other than that it was just trees houses and really boring batch of mmcs to be honest so for that reason the p5 is my least favorite route Tell me about your best bus route. The 187, yeah, my, the 187 is my favourite bus route. Um, as I explained earlier about the 328 being my childhood route with its Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals, when I, I rediscovered them with the 187, because my mum was like, oh, the 187, have you, have you not? Like, she told me about the 187, and I was thinking, and I don't know that route. Apparently, she used to take me on that route when I was little to Asda. Anyway, we went to explore the 187 and it, I was reunited with my Dennis Dark Marshall Capitals a few years after it had been withdrawn with the 328 and that was a madness being reunited with it. I can't forget Crickord Bus Garage, working um, working at Crickord Bus Garage, the work experience, I mean they were so blessed from the, even when I went to go and you know um, ask them if work experience is available and the guy immediately embraced my enthusiasm, he acknowledged it and he's like yeah I mean because I said that my, my dream is to start off as a bus driver. It's to be a bus driver, that's been my dream like from a child and I've stuck to it. What would you really miss about our city, London? Um, the buses, the characters, so just a variety of characters that you can that you get in London. I mean, it's not, it's not just, you know, 
You know, you see how the Americans, you know, in films, you might they might portray us as either Cockney speaking or posh. You've got so much more kind of, you know, diversity and you know, acts different accents and characters than just the posh or the Cockney. There's no type of division like that. You've got, you know, you know, you know, people from I don't know council estates that you know, people just down to earth, chilled. You got people. You know, from all over the world, he might have different accents, a mixture between English and them, their, their country origin accents. So, you know, just a variety and the diversity of the people.